Today I'm going to show you how to install RBP's Midnight Series LED grill on this 2017 Ford F-150. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we have our hood up and the first thing that we need to do is remove these plastic pins that's holding on this plastic guard. To do that we just have a panel tool. This is a two-piece pin so there's actually a top piece and a lower piece. What you need to do is wiggle that tool in between those two pieces lift up on it. Once you get it up like that, you can lift up on the bottom piece and have it come out. There's going to be 10 of those along here and we're just going to go through and remove them all. If it comes apart like that, just make sure you put it back together so that you don't lose them. You want to make sure you keep all these. We are going to reinstall them once we get our new grill on. These two here that go to our scoop, we we'll also have to remove those. Then there's also going to be one right back here behind our scoop. That should be our last one. Once we have all those off, we should be able to just lift up. and pull it out. Now once you get that cover off, you can see that there's some screws that are holding our grill in place. There's going to be four of them. It's going to be a 10 millimeter. And again, just set these aside. We are going to reuse these. So we have a wiring harness right here. We also need to remove that. Just going to be a push pin right there, holding that in place, and then we are just going to unclip it. It's just going to be a little push right there, push in on it, pull it out. Same thing on that one, and then just kind of set that out of the way. So now on each side of our grill, there's also going to be a bolt that needs to be removed that's going to be hidden by our headlight trim. So we need to pull this back far enough to actually reveal that bolt. To do that, uh, we have another push pin at the top that we need to remove, like that. And then you can gently pull back on this piece, just like that. And then you should be able to see a 10 millimeter bolt towards the bottom. Now with our trim piece pulled back, you can see our bolt right there should be able to take a long extension and get in there and remove that bolt. And you're going to want to do that on both sides. Now on each side of your grill you're also going to have this rubber piece. That's going to be attached with three of these push pins. Two you'll be able to reach um, without taking this trim piece off. The third one is towards the bottom. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to get to. But I have somebody here who's going to help me with this when I take off the grill and then once we remove it, we'll take those out at the end. So now from here we can pull our grill up and away a little bit. We can see it's still attached at the bottom. That's where these flaps are attached. I'm going to have um, my assistant here go in there and pop those out and do that side. 
once those are out, you can carefully lift your grill out and away. So now that we have our grill off, what we need to do is separate our grill from our air duct. To start, we're going to have four 10 millimeter nuts with gold studs that are coming through. We're gonna remove those. First one's right here. Next one's right here. Sometimes these studs want to spin. If that happens, there's a little opening to the side of it. You just need to take a pry tool or a flathead screwdriver and just kind of get in there and hold it in place so that you can get the nut off. So if you get a flathead screwdriver, just push it in that hole and kind of wedge it on the side. and then you'll be able to get that nut off. Now we'll move to the other side. And then the last one's right here. Now if we look to the bottom, there's gonna be three nuts that are uh, into plastic studs there. Those are also going to be 10 millimeters. Just be very careful with those. If you're going to use a drill, you want to go nice and slow. And then on these, you might also have to push up on them a little bit as they're turning to get them out. That's when a pry tool comes in handy. And then you get them off just like that. Should be three total running along the bottom. Just like that. Now right down the center, there's a eight millimeter bolt that needs to be removed. There it is right there. Now if we rotate our grill up to the top, there's also going to be four push pins that we need to remove. Again, it's going to be a two-piece top and bottom. You're just going to put a screwdriver or a pry tool in between those, pull up on the top piece, and then you should be able to pull them out. There should be four total. And then from there, we should be able to separate our two pieces. You can remove your factory grill, and then we're going to keep our air duct to install on our new grill. So now we have our new grill on the ground, and I'm just going to place our air dam over the top of that, and just kind of line up our bolts and everything where they're going to need to go. So with that aligned, we can see now that we have some shutters, blades, that are going to hit our lights on both sides. So what we need to do is remove the middle three shutters on each side to make room for those lights when we put everything together. To do that, you're just going to take a flathead screwdriver and pry in on one side. Once you get that side out, it should slide out of the middle. Like that. And 
You're also going to have a little tab on the middle that's kind of holding it in place. Just lift up on that with your flathead and pull it out. And then one more time on this side, like that. And then the same thing on the other side. Okay, now we're going to pull our air dam back off and set that aside for a second. And then we're going to remove the nuts and washers on all of our brackets on our new grill. So now we have our air dam loosely fitted over the studs on our new grill. And that's just to align our brackets at the bottom and sides here because from the factory they're going to come a little bit loose so that you can have a little bit of wiggle room when you're putting this on. So once you have it lined up, you're going to gently remove this. Now we're going to take a 3 8 inch socket and tighten down our five lower brackets. As you're doing this, you want to make sure that these aren't spinning. Now we can get our air dam and reinstall that. Now we're going to fit our air dam back over all of our brackets. It should line up everywhere. And then we can go back through and use all of our provided washers and nuts. Get those all started. And then once we get them all started, we can go back through and tighten them down. Now we can use our same 3 8 socket and tighten down all of those nuts. Now on your four side nuts, you want to try to tighten those down evenly. You don't want to be one side down further than the other side. So you just want to go back and forth and kind of tighten them at the same pace. Top two nuts, you probably will have to get an extension to tighten those down. But again, just make sure you're tightening each side equally. We can go down and tighten the three at the bottom.
So now we can rotate our grill up, line up our holes, and then reinstall our push pins. You might have to push down on these brackets to make sure that the holes all line up. But once you get that bottom portion through both sides, you can then push in the top and then it'll lock it into place. So I'm going to go ahead and lift my grill into place. I've removed the connectors from each of the lights. And then I'm just going to carefully set this into place. You want to make sure that you pull your trim piece back out to get your grill back in so that you don't scratch up any of your paint. And then make sure you line up your holes at the top here, like that. And then we can go back through and reconnect um, all of our side pieces. Remember, we got to put our bolts down in the sides. We're going to reinstall our four bolts in the top. We're just going to start those by hand first, and that's going to help hold the grill in place while we get all of our other bolts in. So now we can also put back our eight millimeter side screws. Just be very careful when you're doing that. Make sure you get your holes lined up. Make sure you don't cross anything up. And then we can go ahead and tighten those down. You're gonna do that on both sides. Now before you put your trim piece back in place, make sure you reinstall your side panel, there's going to be one there, one on the side, right there, and then one down towards the bottom. You can do that on both sides. Now we can go back and tighten up our four 10 millimeter bolts at the top. Now our trim pieces should just clip back into place on both sides. Once you get all those in place, we can then put our push pin back in the top. We can plug our harness back in. Make sure you hear those click in the lock. Now we can put our cover back into place. Make sure it goes underneath your scoop. Line up all your holes. Then once you have that, you can start to put all of your push pins back in place. So now your kit is not going to tell you how to wire these lights up. What you're going to get is two plugs to go with each of those lights, and they're each going to have a power and a ground lead. So you're going to have to figure out at this point how you want to connect your lights. Now you can do that multiple ways, so we're not really going to show you how to do it, but I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We have a wiring harness left over from another light, 
It's got some leads on it that'll go to our battery. It's got a 15 amp fuse here. And then we also have our switch system, which will run up through the firewall and into the cab of the truck. That'll be there. Our leads then will go um, get connected here. So I'll tie these two together, connect them here, and then this will go to the cab, this will go to the battery, and bada boom, we have a switch for our lights. All right guys, that's gonna complete the installation. Now if you're not comfortable doing the wiring or the drilling for the switch, make sure you take it to a professional shop. If you have any other questions, give us a call or visit us online.